All right. Next video. The rise and fall of Hooters Air. Bro, I got to scan this video real quick because it is Hooters. Back into flying. Wait a minute. Hooters girls on every flight. Hooters had an airline? All leather seats with extra legroom. Call 1-888-FLY. Yo, you got to be fucking wacko to, to take a fucking Hooters airline. Like, going to the restaurant, yeah, whatever. You're really going to fly Hooters Air? To stare at a flight attendant's boobs. You might Is Brooke in this video? No. My girlfriend works at Hooters. She does not work at Hooters Air. Known about Hooters Air because it didn't last long. Hooters there you go. It started in 2003, and initially the airline was successful. But it shut down just three years later. We're at the Gary Chicago International Airport. Where Hooters oh, do you think they serve chicken wings on the flight? Oh, ew. Based in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, it offered low-priced direct flights to more than 15 destinations in the U.S. Airfares were a flat rate of $129 each way. That's pretty, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good flight. Damn. So why did Hooters think it was a good idea to start an airline? And why did it fail? If you like what you see here on the outside. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're gonna love what you'll see on the inside. Hooters was founded by- That is such an 80s ad. Just no, just- That is such an 80s ad. Six businessmen in Clearwater, Florida in 1983. A year later, an Atlanta-based group led by Bob Brooks saw the company's potential and bought it outright. It was the first restaurant chain, so Basically, they pioneered the idea that they're going to have all their waiters wear short shorts and really tight tank tops. Do you know why our beer is so cold here at Hooter? Because we keep it in the refrigerator. From kind of the... Oh, really? Really? Dude, the stories my girlfriend tells me about some of the fucking whack house that come into Hooters is just insane. Like, so, like just like desperate. Like, just genuinely, I don't know, dude. Hooters has some good-ass wings, though. I've, I mean, I've fucking eaten there. 80s until the early 2000s, it was a very successful kind of growing business. By 2003, Hooters was flush with cash, and Bob Brooks wanted to expand the brand. So he bought a small North Carolina-based- Why the fuck would you want to expand to a goddamn airline? I feel like that's the weirdest idea ever. Carter you airline. never even see- Half of the point of going to Hooters is seeing the waitresses, because the waitresses literally talk to you. Why would you want to open... Like, if you ever take a flight, how often do you guys see the airline people that, that like, the, the flight attendants? You see them, like, once ever... Like, say you're on a four-hour flight, you'll see the... I mean, like, they're not doing four-hour flights. They were doing local flights that are, like, two hours. But still, you see the flight attendants, like, twice, maybe. Like, the most of the time, they sit in the back. What, are they just going to talk to people on the airline? It's just weird. He repainted the airplanes with the company logo, and Hooters Air took off. What would you tell people out there watching the show about flying Hooters Air? You should definitely do it. It's an experience like no other. By yourself. It's not an experience like no other. I'm going to say the same damn thing. I, my girlfriend works at Hooters. They got some good-ass wings. I understand why people go there. It is not an experience. It is not an experience. Yes, the women that work there are pretty. It, okay, especially Hooters Air. An experience? What, the, the two times the flight attendants walk by, what am I going to go? And fucking look at them as they walk by and ask me if I want pretzels. This is the voice of a former Hooters Air pilot. He asked to remain anonymous. There was a lot of intrigue about this airline, not because of necessarily what was going on on the inside, but more so what people perceived from the outside. It's going to be a nice change from the restaurant uh, instead of serving food and all that stuff yeah. and picking up trash. We get to just basically entertain, ask trivia questions and all that. Ask trivia questions? If I go on a fucking flight and they, they're they like, okay, trivia time. Fuck off. That shit sucks. That sucks. What the fuck? A common misconception about Hooters Air was that the flight attendants on the flights were Hooters girls. Not exactly. In addition to the two Hooters... They don't even work for Hooters. There were three FAA certified flight attendants. You want to hear a little fun fact about Hooters? When you apply to Hooters, you know how in most jobs you, you uh, send in an application and all that? When you apply to Hooters, you only show your picture. Ho uh, application to Hooters counts as a modeling job. 
the reason it does that or the reason they do that and they don't even ask you about like experience or anything like that is because if it counts as a modeling job, they're allowed to uh, decline you for how you look. Because if you apply and you're a really good applicant and they decline you because you're ugly or they think you're ugly or don't fit the Hooters look, you could sue them. So instead, you send in a picture and it counts as a modeling job. And then they're allowed to say that you're too ugly or whatever for Hooters or you don't fit the look or whatever, and it doesn't matter. Flight attendants are the ones who serve all the food and the drinks per usual. I had a professional uniform. I had like a, a navy blue dress, you know, it was very professional. It had the little owl embroidered emblem on it. We just did the safety procedures and stuff like that. And then we had two Hooter girls from different restaurants in the area, but they had no training whatsoever. They were just there just for passenger fun. Oh, so on Hooters Air, they literally had just regular flight attendants that wore regular clothes that had like a little Hooters embroidery. And then they just had two Hooters girls to entertain people. What is it all going to include? You guys are going to be up there uh, serving customers? Uh, no wings. No wings. But great food. But great food. Yeah, we got some soft pretzels, and we got some, like, Oh, uh, some soft pretzels. Oh, boy. Pigs in a blanket, and, you That's know. fucking disgusting. That's fuck pigs in a blanket on a goddamn airplane. Fuck that. Two Hooters girls would get up during the flight and do, like, trivia or little games or, like, sing a song. I think they just sat in their seats the whole time until it was their five minutes to get up. And that was it. And the rest of the time, us flight attendants are, are working. Were there ever any incidents that you witnessed of harassment or customers getting a little too inebriated? I never saw any kind of harassment. There was definitely flirtiness. Any flight, you're always going to... Imagine think. trying to flirt with a flight attendant. On a, on a fucking airplane. You're sitting window seat on Hooters Air, and you're like, yo! And you have to talk, uh, you have to talk, like, past two other people. Like, you're not aisle, you're, you're fucking window. There's two people that are, that are fucking there, and you're just like, yeah, and you're trying to flirt with somebody, like, two other people just sitting there fucking watching the conversation. Fares from $99. Convenient morning departures and evening returns. Hooters Air helped out smaller airports, like the one in Gary, Indiana, just 25 miles southeast of Chicago. That's good news. More airline service, more activity, more economic development, more jobs, more people spending money in uh, Northwest. Like, two more jobs. Like, two more jobs. More economic, more economic, more jobs, more more people, more travel, more, uh, 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 you know, fucking four more people, four more jobs. Yeah, it's really, uh, Gary Indiana really needs the Hooters Air. Shut up. In its heyday, Hooters Air was bringing between three and 5,000 people a week into the Myrtle Beach area. Hooters Air was more than just an airline. It was a huge philanthropic contribution to the Myrtle Beach area by Mr. Brooks, who had a vision that the Myrtle Beach area could grow and expand and evolve as a tourism destination and a business community. Hooters Air was big. Who the fuck goes to Myrtle Beach? <laughs> Myrtle Beach, uh, really a great tourism area. The fuck? No. Citing a $40 million loss. Oh! How do you lose? I don't understand that. I, I have never I have never been able to wrap my brain around that. How companies can lose that much money. Uh, compounded by a couple of factors. They started the airline still as the airline industry was recovering from the 9-11 attacks. People were still scared of getting on airplanes. There was growing low fare competition in the market as Southwest and other airlines had begun to expand. And jet fuel prices were trending upwards, so it just did, wasn't an economically viable business. Hooters chairman Bob Brooks passed away in 2006, the same year that Hooters Air shut down. Damn. There are people at work and people enjoying the Myrtle Beach area that might never have had the opportunity to do so if it weren't for Bob Brooks. So we remain very grateful for his investment in his airline and our community. Despite the failure of Hooters Air, the Hooters brand continued to thrive. They've opened hundreds of locations in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. They're more than a $250 million business. Dude, Hooters is so overpriced, too. I mean, dude, their wings are fucking great, but talk about fucking expensive. It's basically at this point, and they kind of took over the U.S. Hooters. and then the world. Hooters. Oftentimes, going into cities to be on an approach and... Uh... Why North Korea sent hundreds of cheerleaders to the Olympics? <laughs> Don't be